We're on the classes page inside the useful global section. Useful globals are global systems that come with the client first clonable. These are not part of the recommended global systems. Let me explain the difference here. It's very important. Structure, typography, spacing. These are the three recommended global systems. We've identified these three as the most important global systems for your Webflow project. Structure, typography, spacing. Those are probably going to be used on every single project that you do with client first. They're just so universal for everything. So we recommend that you use those three. Then we have other global classes, and that's what we're calling these, other or useful global classes. And these are global classes that you may want to use. Maybe they work for your build, maybe they don't. They're either there to help you build faster or to help keep a certain CSS property unified. Let's go through them, let's figure out why we have these and how you can add to this list or remove from this list. Useful globals. First one we have responsive visibility. This is all about showing and hiding elements really quickly on different responsive levels with very clear naming for our clients. We have our hide classes with each responsive level and we have our show classes with each responsive level. Notice how we're using the hide prefix here and we're using some responsive prefixes here so that we can better search and understand these classes. Max width, this one's a good one, really useful. We have a lot of people using this strategy for keeping elements in max width. Before I go over this, I will make it clear that this is not the same as our container width in structure. We've broken these up into two different sections. We have our container width as the outer container width of that section. It's for keeping the entire section of this content inside a max width. This max width is more about keeping elements inside. We can have more variations, we can have a little bit more, a little bit more change in here. So let me show you the difference. Max width, we have all the way up from XX large, all the way to XX small. We also have max width full. So if I go in here, we can see up here, we have our container width large. We don't want a lot of outer content containers. That's gonna make our page look messy. It's going to make some of the sections much bigger, some of them much smaller, and too many variations of those can be messy. So we decided to keep those unified just the container width is one thing. And then once you get inside, that's when we can start applying the max width. So let's look at this. We have this text on the page with max width X small. It's, gonna, it's going to have a max width of 32 rems. And to better see this, let's zoom out. And you can see that this is just containing the text. So if I were to take this off, it's just a bit too long for me. I don't really like how this is all on one line. So maybe I can do max width. Look at how I have this beautiful returned list. Let me zoom in. Look at this beautiful returned list of all my max width options. This is the power of using keywords and prefix. So I can go and choose my XX small this time and look how nice and small that goes. Great. So this is perfect for containing elements inside the page. Awesome. Back to here. We have our icon classes. This is great for keeping your icons unified throughout the build. Also reduce the need of creating custom classes for every single icon. If you are properly following the four point system, it's very likely that you should only be choosing a few different sizes for your icons. So we have icons small, medium, and large as well as icon one by one large, one by one, this should be medium, icon one by one, this should be small. And the one by one is going to apply a width and a height, width and a height, width and a height. Just the icon small is just going to apply the height or just apply the width. You can choose 
how you want to manage this. By default, it comes with height only. Excellent. As we go down, we're just throwing in some useful SVG icons for you. A lot of sites use these, so you can go copy paste them. We have them nice embedded with current color in an SVG embed. Useful classes as you're building. This is where it gets a little bit more advanced. This is just a preview of what you can have with your build. You can add to this list, remove from this list, and it just helps you build quicker. Z-index classes, we have a line center, div square, layer, clickable on and off, and then overflow, hidden, scroll, and auto. We have identified this list as just classes that we like to build with. So we made a list of classes as a team and this is what they are. You can add to this list or remove as needed. Really, this is optional. This is not something you have to base your build on. And then colors. We do want to have some organization with colors in classes. Of course, we need to use global swatches. This is a requirement. This is another way to keep your colors global. But we're also going to want to apply, let's say, a background color gray, background color white, background color black. Having this type of flexibility, let's go and apply it here to the section. I'm going to give you an example, background color white. Great. So just like that, I can apply a background color white and it's going to put that background color here on the page. Cool. So that's it for the useful globals. This is really up to you, what you want to use, what you don't want to use. Maybe you can add to this list. Tell us if there's something that we should add to this list. And this is a great way to have a global system that really isn't necessary, but can help you build or help keep a certain property unified. Yeah.